Hey, and uh, welcome back to another Hunting Mirages vlog, uh, where I talk about my journey on the road to becoming a Kita hero. Um, t this week I'm going to talk about uh, you know what I've been doing this week, which is uh, I took on a personal assistant. Uh, I've spent a bit of time researching cosplay. I went to my first synthwave gig. And I'm also going to talk about a bit about vlog quality because it's just kind of been in my mind today. Uh, so on my first first bit of exciting news is that uh, I have hired a personal assistant. Uh, now I give a bit of an eyebrow raise when I do that because um, it is my partner, uh, and she's not formally an employee yet since I don't formally have a business. Uh, but uh, my partner is is in between jobs at the moment, and uh, she was looking for uh, part time you know, administrative work. And I have a lot of admin stuff that uh, needs to be done in my life that I have trouble getting around to because I have so many things to do. And so um, we came to an agreement that um, that I would get her to do it for me for money because I'm like, you know. I've got all these things to do, you know, I have a good job, so, you know, I make pretty good money and, you know, I'm at a position in this project where, you know, I, you know, I have too many things to do, I'm looking for ways that I can actually delegate work um, and, you know, pay other people to do things so that I don't have to do everything uh, in order to free up time for me to focus on, you know, the most important things and, you know, and here's my partner looking for work and she only wanted sort of part-time work. And I was like, well, you know, why don't you become my personal assistant uh, and do, um, you know, paperwork and, and, you know, I've got a whole like raft of things that need looking at, you know, around like taxes and insurance and, and what have you. And, you know, and going forward with this project, even, you know, the, yeah, you know, the fact that I'm not that great at keeping up with my general life administration um, means that you know I know full well that when it actually comes to administering like business related aspects of of hunting mirages as a business, I know that that is also similarly going to sort of fall to the bottom of the priority pile. Um, and this will not be the first ever business that I have run. And, you know, I had problems with that previously um, in my previous businesses as well. Uh, you know, that, you know, I don't love doing book work. And, you know, there's when you have like many, many things, you know, when you've got too much to do and you can't get around to everything, you know, the things that, um, that you know, you really enjoy doing the least, you know, sort of tend to go to the bottom of the pile. And you can't, um, you know, you can't not do your paperwork. It will come back to bite you eventually. And so, um, yeah, well, I, I came to an agreement. You know, uh, my partner's going to work for me like, you know, two days a week approximately, um, which means that, you know, that gives her money to um, so that she doesn't have to, you know, she only wanted a part-time job anyway. She doesn't need, you know, to be paid full-time. Um, and it you know gets her out of her immediate pickle, um, gives her a, you know an employer that uh, is going to treat her well, and um, you know it gives me uh, a bit more freedom to uh, focus on the important things like you know getting music out and you know working on all the different things that I need to do in this project that are about like the producing the work of the project quite apart from just you know administrating it. Uh, and so I'm really excited about that. And one of the reasons why I'm most excited about it is because even though it's not formally a job yet, um, this feels like an important step towards actually, um, eventually, um, you know, Hunting Mirage is becoming a formalized business and having employees because, you know, it is my goal that, you know, within like six months to a year or so that I would actually formally employ her to... Um, you know, within the business uh, to, to do these things for me. And, you know, that is awesome because I don't have to do everything myself, um, especially things that I'm not great at. And, um, you know, my partner is, is 
actually, you know, she loves admin work. You know, strangely, it's one of the one of the things where we are not alike at all. Because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm pretty terrible at that sort of stuff. Um, and you know, and I just you know, I just do not like it. It's just not one of those things that I. It's not my passion. It really isn't. So I have a personal assistant, and that's amazing. Uh, next thing is um, I spent a bunch of time this week researching cosplay and cosplay um, tutorials and what have you. I mean, I've always been, you know, I, I love cosplay. I, you know, I just love the idea of, of dressing up. I, I take my kids to Supernova in Sydney every year and... Um, and we uh, we work on costumes and things, and we've always done like fairly simple costumes, you know, just out. But I've always wanted to do armor and and more elaborate costuming, and so you know, there's that level of the interest. But more importantly, and specific to this particular project, is that um, I've always wanted to. Uh, you know, being, you know, I'm into synthwave, you know, I love cyberpunk, I love sci-fi, you know, all of those things are sort of elements of my music as well. And, you know, I've always wanted to look the part. Um, and, you know, I just love, you know, honestly, I would, I would, you know, I would look like something straight out of Shadowrun on a daily basis um, if I could, you know, like just as my regular fashion choices, if I could. But, you know, it's really hard to find clothes that actually fit the bill, you know, and which goes, you know, I could go on a whole other rant about how hard it is to shop fashion as a man um, because, you know, there really aren't, there's a really not a very broad range of styles that you can go with um, that don't cost you a fortune. I mean, you know, who can afford to, um, to buy everything from Etsy? you know not me um and so um you know i've always wanted to to have a more interesting look and what have you but it's just really hard to shop and so i'm actually getting to the point where i'm turning to cosplay um and you know cosplay skills and what have you to actually create the look for myself that i would like to have you know as an artist um you know in photos on stage you know on screen, etc., uh, and I'm, you know, and I'm getting very interested in actually using, um, you know, elements of cosplay to to build my style, uh, my visual style. Um, and I found uh, Kamui Cosplay, which is a YouTube a YouTube slash website um, personality who um, it's a um, a uh, girl called Svetlana who does all these amazing YouTube videos where she shows all of her skills and techniques in um, making uh, cosplay outfits and she's absolutely incredible I mean you know like a true artist and also like incredibly generous with sharing everything that she knows about how she does it and it just you know, after I found that, and it just made all of it a lot more accessible because she actually sells a whole bunch of um, books which you can buy as PDFs and what have you that are just, um, you know, how-to books on all sorts of aspects of cosplay making. And, um, yeah, and so it just made, you know, I, I've had all those thoughts about cosplay and, and, and you know, stage outfits and what have you for a while but it always just seemed like another one of those like huge you know skill rabbit holes that you know I could spend years just you know getting the basics down until I have something that looks half decent and finding Kamui cosplay just made the whole thing um, a lot simpler because you know there's all the information you need is right there and it just made it seem a lot more accessible so that was really exciting um, I immediately purchased her full bundle of all of the books um, that she sells, you know, as PDF, um, which I shared with my kids, and you know, we're all excited about you know our uh, our costumes for Supernova this year, um, and so that was something that happened in the last week. I'm really excited about putting together you know my uh, my look for the stage. And uh, then the next thing I did this week is uh, I went to my first ever synthwave gig. And this is pretty exciting. It was Perturbator, 
who played in Sydney at the Crowbar on a Thursday night, which was last Thursday. And it was just awesome. You know, it was so cool to go to a gig where the audience was synth wave and, you know, the main thing on stage was like dark synth music. Um, and, you know, it was it was just awesome to be there. And, you know, the thing I loved about it the most is just, you know, getting to go and support Synthwave and see a whole lot of people who are into that sort of thing all, you know, being there and, and loving that gig. And, you know, the gig itself was was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was very much a, uh, um, you know, Perturbator was, it was interesting because, you know, he doesn't really uh, interact with the crowd. Um, so, you know, that was a little disappointing, you know, that he was just a silhouette on stage for most of the show. And most, you know, the stage show was really just lighting. Um, and, you know, the, the sound was, um, the sound was pretty good. There was lots of bass, which was great. Um, but the, you know, the mid range was a bit, a bit scooped. Um, but probably, you know, the most notable thing about the gig is that it was like one of the grossest, hottest, stickiest, humid nights I've, you know, I've had in Sydney for a while um, because I I travelled down to Sydney to go to the gig and you know not only was it like really hot like we were all just sweating before we even went into the gig and then inside the gig it was not air conditioned in a fairly small club with about two or three hundred people in it and you know once Perturbator came on you know I swear to God, it was—it must have been at least fifty degrees in that room and a hundred percent humidity. Um, everyone was just like sweating, and it was crazy hot, uh, and it was just insane. Um, I've never been so sweaty at a gig in all my life, and you know it would all be fun and and kind of you know memorable, uh, except that about. 20 minutes before the end of the gig which only went for about an hour you know some of one of my favorite songs came on and i was you know getting right into it and pumping my fist in the air and dancing and what have you and you know i was exerting myself you know more than i should have uh given the circumstances and then all of a sudden i i just there, it just felt like there was no air around me i i think you know what happened is that you know i got a bit puffed and then I just couldn't get enough air in because it was just so hot and there were so many people packed in. And all of a sudden I just felt really crook and I just turned and I, you know, like barged my way through the crowd toward the door. And as I got to the door that led into the rest of the pub area, like I, I just started vomiting, um, you know, into my mouth. Like I just clapped my hand over my mouth and none of it came out. And then I just had to like run for the toilets. And then I spent like the last 20 minutes of the gig, like sitting out the back, recovering from what was clearly heat exhaustion. So uh, thanks Crowbar for not having any air conditioning. That was fabulous. Um, but still, overall, it was quite an adventure. Um, you know, I got the tour shirt and, um, you know, I was still super pumped to, to go and see Perturbator. That was really cool. Uh, now, the last thing I want to talk about was uh, vlog quality. Um, you know, the vlogs that I do every week, you know, they're just, they're like this. This is another vlog that's much like, you know, the other, the last, you know, seven vlogs that I've done since December uh, when I started vlogging. And, you know, I know, I know full well that these vlogs are, you know, kind of, you know, a minimum viable product, as we call it in the indus- in the tech industry. Um, and that, um, you know, I wish they were better, but it's really, you know, I, 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 I try to spend minimal time actually um, putting these together and getting them done because I've just got too many other things to do. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather be spending my time, you know, making my music better, writing music, etc. cetera, um, you know, doing my vocal practice, um, you know, making you know all sorts of you know there's so many aspects to this project that that could be better if i spent more time on them and the vlog is just a long way down the list and but you know i still you know it frustrates me every time i finish a vlog that 
um, you know, like for example, case in point, the fact that I don't have a script and that I don't, you know, I'm not precisely sure what I'm about to say about this means that, you know, that my speech is often very halting and there's um and ah and, and you know, I, I tend to sort of go off on tangents and uh, say things, you know, like go off on tangents I didn't mean to go off on and forget to say things that I wanted to say. Um, and that's, you know, I and, and I know this because, you know, years ago I used to do the Pirate Party podcast and the first like six or seven episodes of that podcast I, I scripted carefully. Like, every word of the whole thing was scripted and the quality was just great. Like they, they were really good, tight episodes of that podcast um, and you know I know that that is a level of quality that I can do and I know that these vlogs are not up to that level of quality uh, and so you know today uh, when I sat down to do the vlog I was like oh, what am I going to do I don't know I've got a couple of things I could talk about you know it would really be better if I didn't just you know have some meandering discussion like I usually do and so I got up in my head a bit about the quality of the vlog and how I could make it better and of course whenever I do that uh, I end up going down a rabbit hole of you know like trying you know getting hung up about quality and you know and now it's like four hours later you know and and it didn't actually get any better because in the end after four hours of sort of ruminating and and thinking about how i could make it better and planning and what have you you know it is no better uh, because in the end i just had to stop doing that sit down hit record and just talk off the cuff with my very short list of of you know like subjects things that i'm going to talk about and um so I just, you know, wanted to address that because, you know, it's something that happened this week is I got hung up about vlog quality and wasted half a day. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that happens, you know, with these things. And it's, you know, and it, it's, it's important to note because, you know, I have this same problem with quality everywhere in my project, you know. Um, if you've been to my new website at huntingmirages.com, you know, you'll note that it's like a really, really basic website that could be better in every possible way. Uh, but if I start spending time on that, there is literally no limit. Like the, the you know, the... Uh, and. You know, and that applies to everything. You know, there's the website, there's the vlogs, there's social media and posting on social media. There's my email newsletter. You know, there's um, there's just so many aspects. And see, there's an example of that would be a much more complete list if I'd scripted this. But right now, because I'm on camera, the things have just flown out of my head. Um, and so. You know that it's, it's the the coaching that I did to help me um, get past my creative blocks with my actual music making. One of the major aspects of that coaching, like a major sort of lesson that that coaching is trying to deliver to you know people such as myself, is that when you get hung up on quality, um, like your output just drops to you know very little um, and practically zero. Uh, because you know you spend all your time trying to make it better instead of just putting stuff out, and so all of these things, you know, I'm trying to err on the side of actually getting stuff done instead of making it better, because the more you focus on making it better, the less you actually do, and it's the actual doing that tends to produce better results, you know, because if you because you're practicing, you know, so here I am you know, practicing doing a vlog, um, and it is actually a vlog that I will put out. Um, but, you know, if I get hung up on quality, then the vlogging will stop. And so I can't do that. But then every time I make a vlog, I'm like, oh, that could have been way better. And if it was better, you know, I'd be more likely to get more audience and et cetera, et cetera. And so, 
you know, I'm constantly on this roller coaster of, you know, needs to be better quality. No, it really doesn't. Stop thinking about that. Ah, oh, but it needs to be better quality. Ah, oh, but no, really, I shouldn't. And, you know, it is an emotional roller coaster that just goes on and on and on. And that's, you know, I guess just part of, you know, what being an artist is about. But, you know, I do like to, you know, talk about these things because, um, you know, that's part of what this vlog is about, is about, you know, like pulling back the curtain a bit and showing what it is like to be an artist because, you know, for a long time, you know, I didn't think I was an artist at all because, um, you know, I was I was always up in my head about all the things that I couldn't do very well. And, you know... Eventually, I learned that uh, that's actually what being an artist is like. And so here I am making my imperfect vlog because that's what it means to be an artist. And that's all I have this week. Um, so if you do want to visit my website at huntingmirages.com, that would be awesome. Um, because, and the only thing there that you can do is subscribe to my newsletter. And uh, if you subscribe to my email list, um, that would be uh, that. That is the main place where I want people to go. You know, I'm not into telling people to like and subscribe to me on on YouTube because on YouTube I don't own the audience. I don't. You know, I don't even. Yeah, you know, YouTube doesn't even tell you who the people are who are subscribed to you. You know, so you know. I mean, if you if you like and subscribe me on YouTube, that's great. But like, you're not my fan. You're you're YouTube's fan. And I don't even get to know who you are. So, you know, I would like to know who you are. And I would like to actually have you as my fan. And, you know, for that reason, you know, you'll generally see that I'll direct people to my website and ask them to subscribe to my mailing list because then I actually know who you are. And I can contact you directly, um, which I won't do very often. Um, I think at the moment I'm just putting out a you know, one a week just to mention what I've done uh, with my vlogs and my demo. So demo Thursday, this Thursday, um, you know, subscribe to my email list on my website, huntingmirages.com, and I'll see you next week. Thanks very much.